Hi, buenas tardes, uh, buenas noches, whichever. Uh, I'm Roger Caban, I'm from the Board of Directors of Health Community, and I'm here to welcome you to uh, uh, the Ortiz Wittenberg residence. Today we're also celebrating the restoration of the Spirit of East Harlem, which is a mural that Hope Community commissioned in 1978 by the artist Hank Prushing, and Manny Vega was uh, his, uh, his apprentice at the time, and he's come a long way since, okay? Unfortunately, recently, uh, somebody vandalized or defaced the mural, and that's what actually is triggered. And Manny, again, did that restoration. Seems Manny keeps coming back to that mural. That's why we're here today to talk about that subject. It's an open subject. Okay, and of course, the panel is going to be moderated by Frank Perez. Okay, um, <clears throat> before we uh, start, what I want to do is just um, uh, briefly give you... Uh, 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 read you brief bios of the panel because we have a really distinguished panel. Um, Manny Vega, right here, this gentleman here. He is, uh, has created and or restored at least five artworks in East Harlem, including the Spirit of East Harlem and the Julia de Burgos Mosaic. In addition to murals, Manny creates costumes, drawings, paintings, and prints and works regularly with youth both here in New York City and Brazil. James Topp, to my right, is a Harlem-based graffiti artist who worked to preserve a hip-hop mural he helped create in 1999 that included portraits of Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, James Brown, that, and that mural actually was torn down earlier this year to make way for a condominium development on 147th Street. It's a shame. Well, it wasn't quite torn down yet, mm -hmm. and, and we're still trying uh, to preserve it, so it's not completely torn down, but close to it. Wow, okay. Thank you. All right. James is also very much part of the Graffiti Wall of Fame crew and works with local youth. Vagabond Beaumont, on my left, uh, is a writer, producer, director, and editor. Vagabond is a founder of the Reconstruction Network, a politically radical artist collective for which he created murals, posters, pamphlets, and videos, and helped organize political marches, rallies, vigils, art shows, screenings, and protests. He's a very busy man. Janet Brown Reinitz. Janet is a muralist, painter, and activist, and current president of Art Makers, a politically oriented, community-based, artist-run mural organization in New York City. She has collaborated in the painting of more than 50 community murals in the city, as well as in San Francisco, Pensacola, Florida, and Savannah, Georgia, and internationally in Nicaragua, England, and Georgia. Okay, so we do have a panel, a very good panel, and um, uh, before we start, I, I just want to read a definition that I got off the internet on graffiti. Uh, graffiti is a name for images of, or lettering, scratch, scrawl, painted, or marked in any manner on property. Graffiti is sometimes regarded as a form of art and other times regarded as unsightly damage or unwanted. Graffiti is any type of public markings that may appear in the forms of simple written words to elaborate wall paintings. Graffiti has existed since ancient times with examples dating back to ancient Greece and the Roman Empire. Okay, so with that, um, we want to talk about today basically um, uh, the situation that occurred um, on, the, um, on the artwork, the, the facing of the artwork in East Harlem. Okay, uh, first question uh, we'd like to put out there is um, basically what are your thoughts on the recent tagging of the Spirit of East Harlem mural? And being that, uh, Manny, you are the creator of that, what, um, what do you think about that? I'm sure everybody's familiar with the mural, right? At least everybody here. Um, when Hank originally designed the mural, he actually uh, invited the concept of people coming in and you know, putting their own uh, mark and signature. There was graffiti at the time, but it wasn't uh, on the level that it is now. Um, what, I'd, uh, what happened, I think, with, with the recent tagging was uh, the, these were artists from the outside. They weren't from the, from the neighborhood at all. And they were part of a movement of, of graffiti artists who do this, you know, for instant notoriety. You know, uh, as soon as they do it, what's important to them is take a picture of it. And then they have their own way, their own network in the internet. Publishers, you know, the big thing for graffiti artists now is to get in books about graffiti. You know, that's, that's the cap for them, you know. And they're very aggressive, they're very, you know, assertive about it, sometimes very clever. Um, some of them earn it, 
Uh, but in this case, you know, uh, something else took place, which was uh, amazing. The people had not tagged this mural since the time that I uh, uh, restored it, the second time, which was in 97. And out of, you know, just the mileage that this mural has and what, what it means to different people. Um, when I say the mileage, I mean how many television crews have come by and negotiated with Hope Community to use it, you know? How many times has it been in movies already? On photographs, brochures, menus, you know? More important is the personal association that the neighborhood has, especially the people that still know somebody up on that wall. Um, and to see the outrage, you know, I was in Brazil, I was taking a break in my house, and Marina sends me an email, you know, I, I have access to, you know, internet. And when I saw, you know, the tags and how huge they were, I mean, I was an outrage, but I, w I was shocked. I was shocked, you know. I, I didn't expect them to go that far, you know. Um, and, and maybe numb, just for a minute, numb. But, you know, not to the point where, like, I was, you know, angry or enraged, because, again, it was a concept that Hank invited. Um, but when I, you know, uh, three days later, I arrived in New York, not only did I see it, but standing in the, in the neighborhood and hearing people go by and being really ticked off, feeling that they were, uh, what's the word, violated. Violated, I, I'll have to use that word. Um, and that outweighed the amount of people that had said, you know what, it doesn't look that bad, because there were some of them there. And I have to agree, you know, these, these artists were artists, you know. You know um, Graffiti to me is a, a genre just like any other genre that we work with. You know, they have le earned their place in the art scene. But this mural is something else, you know, because this mural belongs to a community. It is the actual heart of the community to these people. And that's why they, they were enraged, you know, to have it violated, especially from somebody from the outside. East Harlem is full of graffiti artists, you know, but there's a protocol, a silent protocol, not only with the spirit of East Harlem, but with many murals, whereas they, they don't trespass between mediums. They don't tag on, you know, murals that are not of the graffiti realm. Amongst themselves, hey, it's a samurai code that they have, right? And that's part of the, the whole graffiti, you know, uh, realm and all that, and what they do. But this was different. Um, I just like to say that I'm very sensitive to all art forms, especially in, in our community. Um, a, a cultural and a historical mural such as this uh, should always be protected and preserved as, as much as possible. I think it comes down to education that we need to have mural recognition, um, mural um, classes that go around the community, take the school kids and go around the community and identify really special murals that have to do with history and, and, and culture so that we know this is a part of our, our thing, our, our, our Latin thing, our African diaspora. This happening here, it was done by somebody who does not have sensitivity to this mural and the history of this mural. When, when these guys came into this community, they knew somebody. They said, oh, I see a nice wall over there, and it's nice, and they got a nice background on it, and I'm going to put my name on it there. The New York City Police Department is very aggressive when it, when it comes down to identifying and, and people and, and locking people up, I think that even the money that they going around locking up our youth as far as graffiti should go right back into the schools and, and, and be given to, uh, you know, art classes. Most of the youth today, they like graffiti art and they want to express themselves in, in that art form because it is really what's happening now start getting this art form um, within the fabric of beautifying our communities and getting this art form within the fabric of the educational system. And let's this, this get it in the community and let's let our youth 
be the ones that are, are now part of the beautification of our community with graffiti art. 